Howdy everybody and welcome back to another stock analysis video. Today we are going to be analyzing the company Adobe. Now this company was actually recommended by one of my friends. He has not commented about it though so unfortunately I cannot show you his comment. However he did message me privately saying hey could you check out Adobe. I know it doesn't pay a dividend but it has fallen a lot and well let's see if this company has finally fallen enough to where we might actually want to buy it. So with that said, let's get started with this analysis. Coming over here to the spreadsheet, as I said, this company does not pay a dividend, so we really can't take a look at the dividend summary. But coming over here, we got the ticker symbol ADBE for Adobe, market cap of around $208.7 billion, PE guys of 44.15. Now, as I said, this company has already fallen down by a huge amount. The current share price is 442. And the fact that the PE is 44 is already telling me that even after this huge drop to $442, it is still very, very expensive. In fact, just looking at this, this company has fallen down from a whopping $686 all the way to $442. And with this fall, we're still seeing that this is still very, very expensive with a PE of 44. Now, obviously, this is only one metric. It only takes into account the earnings. We're going to take a look at the income the cash flow, the shares outstanding, the revenue, and come up with a market cap for what this company should be with. And then we're going to make some assumptions as to where they're going to be in the future and also how many shares they're going to be buying back in the future or issuing, depending on what they're doing. And we're going to come up with a target share price, adjusting for debt and not adjusting for debt for this company. Now, since they do not pay a dividend, all of their five-year free cash flow around $4.5 billion is going straight into reinvesting in themselves, paying out debt, and making acquisitions. Therefore, all of this money is for themselves, which gives them a lot more room to grow. Now coming over here to the fundamentals, we got the net income five years ago of around $1.7 billion to one year ago of around $4.8 billion, which is an increase of 185%, which is crazy, absolutely insane. Now, something to note here though, and I don't know if this is a COVID thing or not, I don't necessarily know, but as you can see, two years ago, they completely just shot up to $5.3 billion, whereas three years ago, they made around $3 billion. Now, my reasoning for this could possibly be the fact that people were staying at home and a lot of people wanted to make videos. I mean, I started making videos around the same time, honestly, even though I kind of already made some beforehand. I didn't really like it that much un until I found actually making investing videos is what I like to do. But nonetheless, Adobe two years ago, I would have to assume that their net income went up because a lot of people were staying home and a lot of people started to pick up the whole streaming, the whole video making, editing, that kind of stuff. And they do have a software where you can edit videos. I believe it's called Premiere. So this is to me is the reason why their net income just shot up two years ago. Will they continue this increase? I don't necessarily know, but from one year ago, they still went a significant amount, a little lower than two years ago, but they still went higher than they were in the previous years to $4.8 billion, which again is really, really good to see. Next, we got the free cash flow, the lifeblood of the company. This is the cash flow operations, less your capital expenditures. And companies can do a lot of stuff with this cash flow. They can pay out dividends, which they don't. They can reinvest in themselves. They can pay down debt and they can make acquisitions. Now, obviously, you want this number to be increasing by a significant amount. And as we can see right here, five years ago of $2.7 billion to one year ago of $6.9 billion, which is an increase of 152% with an average five-year free cash flow, as we saw, of $4.5 billion. Now, even though this is increasing from the five years ago to the one year ago, what's even more important than this, and this is what I look for in their free cash flow in pretty much every single company is consistent increases in their free cash flow. If you take a look at this graph, they are very, very steadily increasing their free cash flow year over year over year. This is not like one outlier. This is not like, oh, the one year they had like a really, really bad cash flow. Like there are no outliers here, right? They're slowly increasing it, which again, it's really, really good to see. And this is exactly something that you want to be looking for in a company. Next, we got the revenue. Five years ago of $7.3 billion to one year ago of $15.8 billion, which is a huge increase of 116.19%. 
And just like we saw with the free cash flow, a nice steady increase in the revenue is exactly what you see and is exactly what you want to look for. Now let's take a look at the total assets minus the total liabilities. This metric pretty much tells you if the company is able to afford their debts. You want this number to be positive. The more positive it is, the better. Now, currently, guys, they have about $1.7 billion in assets minus liabilities, meaning if they were to liquidate all their assets, they'll be able to cover all their liabilities and still be left with around $1.7 billion. Now, obviously, while they are positive today, three years ago, they went negative at around $1.7 billion. And not only that, four years ago, they barely were positive at $555 million dollars so i don't necessarily know what's going on here with the total assets and total liabilities even though they have been positive for the majority of the time the fact that they went negative and barely made it four years ago tells me that they might not be able to cover all the, their liabilities or maybe this depends on how much of their software they're able to sell every single year but nonetheless their average total assets is around 7.3 billion dollars their average total liabilities is around 5.9 billion dollars and then taking the average assets minus the average liabilities we get around 1.4 billion dollars now let's take a look at the shares outstanding and this is the silent killer when it comes to investing people don't understand it or don't even know that this exists this tells you whether or not the company is diluting you as the investor i always make the analogy of a slice of pizza if you have a pizza pie and you want to divide that equally among 10 different people, then the slice of pizza will be a certain size for those 10 different people. Now let's say that you bring in 20 people and you still want to divide the pizza up equally amongst those 20 people. Well, the size of pizza, now that you're getting the size of it, is decreasing. This is exactly what's going on here. The more shares that a company issues, the less ownership of the company you have. Therefore, you want this number to be going down. And Adobe right here, five years ago of 491 million shares to today of 475 million shares, which is a decrease of 3.32% on the five year and from the previous to current year, which by the way, in this case, I'm taking 479 and 575 million since today they haven't updated this in Seeking Alpha, so 475, that point, this would be zero. But taken from two years ago to one year ago, it is a decrease around 0.84%. And lastly, we got the cash equivalents. And currently, they have around $3.8 billion in cash equivalents with an average cash of $3.1 billion. And now knowing all this, we're going to make some assumptions. I'm going to make a low, median, and high assumption. And I'm going to use three different factors. The growth, predicted share buyback, and required rate of return. For all of these assumptions, I'm going to keep the required rate of return the same at around 10% to match the S&P 500, and I'm going to be changing the growth and predicted share buyback in accordance to the revenue growth year over year, which according to Seeking Alpha has been around 22.67% and their forward is about 17%. And the predicted share buyback, I'm going to base it off of the amount of share shares that they have bought back within the past five years that we just saw. So with that, for the low assumption, I'm going to assume guys a growth of 10%. For the projected share buyback, I'm going to assume around 2%. And this actually comes out to be a target share price, not adjusting for debt. We're going to adjust for debt in just a second. Not adjusting for debt of $256.57. For the media assumption, I'm going to assume a growth of 11% with a projected share buyback of 3%. This comes out to be $273.50. And for the high assumption, I'm going to say 12% growth, projected share buyback of 4%. This comes out to be $291.58. Now we need to adjust for debt. And the way that we do this is we take their cash on hand, which is the reason why I measure the cash equivalents, and their net debt. Add them together, and then you add that to the market cap that we just came up with using discount and free cash flow. And in doing so, you get this number. The more cash that this company has on hand, the higher the number will be. The more debt that this company has on hand, the lower this number will be, obviously. So the target share price adjusting for debt for the low assumption actually comes out to be $265.16. For the median assumption, it comes out to be $282.37. And for the high assumption, it comes out to be $300.72. Now what I like to do is add a margin of safety just so that way we have a cushion. Because the more you pay for something today, the less returns you will have in the future. And assuming a margin of safety of 5, 10, and 15%, for the low assumption, we would like to buy between $225 all the way up to $252.
For the median assumption, we would like to buy between 240 all the way up to 268. And for the high assumption, we would like to buy between 255 and 285. Guys, the current share price is 442. Therefore, what this is telling me is that if you agree with my assumptions, then this thing needs to drop by a significant amount, which by the way, also is justified by the PE ratio of 44, right? This isn't a PE that's like 22 or 23 or 20. This is 44. So this really does need to drop by a significant amount. But then again, as I said, these are my assumptions. If you do not agree with them, which by the way, you shouldn't agree with them. You should make your own assumptions because I'm not telling you what to buy. I'm not telling you where to put your money. You do whatever you want with that. All I'm saying is that these are my assumptions and you should 100% get this calculator. I have it available so that anybody can have it. Just make a copy of it in my discounted free cash flow calculator video, the updated one. There's a link for that. Make a copy of it and you can make your own assumptions. All I ask for guys is like, subscribe, comment, and share. I really want to grow my channel. In fact, we've been doing awesome with 366 subs. We'd love to get to 500 by the end of March so that way I can start making community posts. That'd be so cool. That way I can ask all of you guys like, hey, which stocks should I talk about next? And then I can make polls and all this stuff. It's going to be awesome. But that's just that. If you agree with my assumptions, great. If you do not, then make your own assumptions. The link is in that video. All in all, guys, when it comes to Adobe, this is actually a company that I was tempted to put in a growth portfolio that I was kind of trying to make. And honestly, if this company does fall to around 200 bucks based on my assumptions, then I am 100% willing to buy this. Yeah, they, they don't pay a dividend, but at the same time, who really cares, right? I mean, if it has a lot of growth potential, then by all means, you may want to buy it. But that pretty much does it for this episode. Like, if you like, comment, subscribe. It really does help it with the algorithm. On YouTube, you can follow me on my new tech sites, Bitchu, Odyssey, and Rumble, where you do my stock analysis videos and crypto videos. You will find exclusives as well. And in regards to YouTube and Rumble, I have a Let's Play channel called Fatal Place. Link in the description where I'm currently playing through Pokemon Legends Arceus. So if you want to catch that, you make sure to click the link in the description below. So with that said, peace out, and be on the lookout for the next stock analysis video.